Barakata Yahabo, Barakata Yahabashai, Bahashom, Barakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahabashai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well, and peace and salutations to you sincere Akim out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the Brother Raya with another video, and in this video, I'll be profiling an article from endoftheamericandream.com titled, Three existential threats that we are facing right now which could potentially result in millions of dead americans and hey there will be millions of dead americans hey we're coming into the times of jacob's trouble where yahabu bahashem yahabu shai is going to judge the people on this planet for all the wickedness they've been committing chiefly in the bedrock of wickedness the united states of america which is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures. And again, millions of Americans will die. Ultimately, all Americans will, you know, be destroyed when 200 million nuclear missiles hit this place, turning it into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, and then a desolate, uninhabitable wasteland. Afterwards, the only people that are going to be making it out of America alive are going to be the elect of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the Israelite foreigners who look like the heathen nations, and specifically the one-third as they are known in the United States of America, while the two-thirds of our people in America who are rebellious and want to continue living this American death style, hey, they're going to go out right along with their heathen, you know, brothers and sisters, so to speak. But hey... This article is going to go into uh, different scenarios, you know, that are going to lead up to that nuclear destruction, those judgments, those plagues, those calamities that Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to bring to the United States of America. In recent years, there has been one enormous crisis after another. We live at a time of major wars, global pestilences and billion dollar natural disasters millions have died over the last several years and i believe that millions more will die during the years ahead and he's right on the money with that in fact there are several existential threats that we are facing right now which could potentially result in millions of dead americans i wish that i was exaggerating but i am not and through the scriptures and the understanding of these prophecies it's not a potentiality, but it's inevitability. Throughout human history, great pestilences have killed millions of people many times. Today, our scientists are taking some of the deadliest diseases ever known to humanity and, per and are purposely trying to make them more infectious. Here's just one example. And real quick, you know, this is a medical, you know, information disclaimer. I'm not a certified doctor or a medical physician, you know, nor do I, I recommend any medical advice. I'm simply reading this information for educational purposes. The U.S. government is spending one million of American taxpayer money to fund experiments on dangerous bird FLU, you know, pestilences in collaboration with Chinese scientists. And hey, the powers that be out there, you know, they've got their hands in a lot of these different, you know, projects out here because they plan on uh, releasing things to create chaos out here to do what? Bring that order out of chaos, bringing about their great R-E-S-E-T, that fourth industrial revolution, their NW0, which involves a digital cashless society and everybody on the grid with a C-hip implant in their body. And the C-hip implant is, of course, the M-A-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18. And what would be one of the, what would be a very, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? A very convenient way to get people to get that C-hip in them. Oh, look, 
We've got deadly pestilences out here and we need everybody to make sure that they're up to date on their juice shots and they're going to need some kind of identification for it. Why not this digital identification in you to show that you're up to date on your juice shots? Remember how things were during 2019 to 2021? You know, people were losing their jobs, restricted from going into particular stores if they didn't have the juice or proof of identification for the juice. That was just a dry run for the main event, which is quickly coming upon us. The research involves infecting ducks and geese with different strains of pestilences to make them more infectious and study the pestilences potential to jump into mammalian hosts. According to research documents, it is being funded through the U.S. Department of Agriculture and collaborating studies will take place at sites in Georgia, Beijing and Edinburgh and Scotland. Are they insane? According to the C to the D to the C, bird pestilence has a death rate of more than 50 percent in humans. And these researchers want to make it more infectious. As I have repeatedly warned my readers over the years, this type of research really is an existential threat to humanity. It is way too easy for an accident to happen. And once a dangerous bug gets out, it can spread around the globe in the blink of an eye. And the head of the WHO is warning that the timing of the next great global outbreak is a, is a matter of when, not if. The WHO made yet another warning of an impending dis-ease X outbreak with Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus telling world leaders it is a matter of when, not if. You know, main point in that, I'm going to be a... Uh, skipping around just to get to the main points of course strange pestilences are already making headlines all over the globe here in the u.s we witnessed the first ever death from alaska pox in late january an unidentified immunocompromised man died from alaska pox in late january he lived in the woods of kenai peninsula by himself and it's unclear how he contracted the pestilence alaska pox from the same genus as smallpox and, you know, Curious George pox was first discovered in 2015 in Fairbanks and is more common in small mammals. This is the seventh human case overall, the first outside the Fairbanks area and the first to lead to death. And it is being reported that there is a confirmed case of the bubonic pestilence in Oregon. The first case of the bubonic pestilence found in eight years in one U.S. state has been found and is said to have come from a cat. And in that uh, previous paragraph we read about dealing with the bird pestilence, what did the author of the article say? That you've got U.S. and Chinese scientists, you know, studying it to see if it can uh, cross species. Hey, nothing out here happens by coincidence. Oregon health officer Richard Fawcett told NBC News that the patient who caught the pestilence from her pet became very sick. Usually this kind of infection starts with flu-like symptoms such as tiredness, fever, chills, and a headache. But in Oregon, the infection had advanced to a draining abscess called a bubo, which is, which is unusual these days. Hey. And in the scriptures, it said that there would be great pestilences, you know, during these last days. This is Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to start at verse 7. And these were some of the end time signs that Yahawashai, the son of the Most High, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus, told his disciples to look for to know that they were living in the last days. And as it says in Romans chapter 15, everything written aforetime was written for our learning. So while he spoke to his disciples in the past of these things, he was really speaking to us today who are about to go through these things. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And we can clearly see that racial tensions are getting to a boiling point out here, especially in the United States of America and kingdom against kingdom. It's like you hold on a second. And 
we can see, you know, kingdoms are rising against kingdoms out here. You've got the Russian war in Ukraine. You've got uh, the U.S. and the EU against Russia. You've got the U.S. against China. You know, the possibility of China invading Taiwan, the Israeli, you know, Hamas conflict, the U.S. and the state of Israel against Iran. We could go on and on. And there shall be famines, which there will be, you know, famines of biblical proportions and pestilences, bird pestilence, the bubonic pestilence, Alaska pox, among a whole host of other things, whether naturally occurring or man-made getting out out here and earthquakes in diverse places. And I was reading an article, you know, earlier saying that recently there are around I think 945 earthquakes in California alone. And on top of that, you're having earthquakes take place damn near daily all across the planet. But as it says in verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. We're just in the beginning stages of things right now. Reading about isolated incidences here and there. And uh, a lot of people speculating on what comes next. Well, what comes next is mass death and destruction and judgment. This is 2nd Esdras in the Apocrypha, chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 17. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? And when the prophet Esdras saw these things, even he was terrified at how horrible those visions were. And the only people that are going to be delivered is, for one, an Israelite. And two, you know, an Israelite of the elect. The beginning of sorrows. Hey, all these are just the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, World War Three, nuclear war, war between the U.S. and Russia, you know, war between, uh, you know, the U.S., the state of Israel and Iran and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, these pestilences, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, scourges for correction, you know, scourges for judgment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. And we especially saw this with our people during that whole thing in 2019 to 2021. Here you had our people mocking the prophets, coming onto our videos and, you know, scoffing. But what, when that situation happened, a lot of you Israelites were coming out of the woodworks to get answers from the prophets. You know, old family members who used to scoff at you were asking, oh, what's going to happen next? What should I do? But when things started slowing down, hey, the majority of our people went back to being scoffers again verse 21 behold victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case you know food and these other uh, creature comforts out here which hey these victuals are no longer being found cheap out here with what inflation which is going to turn to hyperinflation <laughs> hey people living paycheck to paycheck getting kicked out of their houses, losing their jobs, you name it, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, the sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. People out here are going to be dying from uh, pestilences, starving to death, and that sword, which goes into many things, race wars out here, civil unrest, and what? Foreign troops on the streets of America killing these people, which brings me into my next, you know, part of this article. Let me switch gears and talk about another existential threat. According to 60 Minutes, the number of migrants from China that are crossing our southern border has gotten 50 times higher over the past couple of years and a very large proportion of them are Chinese males of military age. War correspondent Michael Yan, 
and the Rubin Brothers of Muckraker.com have documented the presence of dangerous looking elements from China, which the U.S. is at odds with, Iran, which the U.S. is damn sure at odds with, Syria, which the U.S., you know, helped foment that Syrian civil war with their proxy mercenary forces, ISIS and Venezuela, which remember the U.S. damn near collapsed Venezuela back around, you know, 2017 to 2018 with all those crippling sanctions among the hordes of migrants traveling up from Central America. And hey, there are reports of Russians in the mix as well. Jan and Rubens have noticed, among other things, that Chinese males of military age are traveling in packs of 5 to 15, are unaccompanied by family members, and are pretending not to speak English. Some of them on their way to America have performed Chinese military rituals. Like I just said, this is a part of that sword that's going to be taking away people in great numbers. Foreign troops on the streets of America, you know committing, you know, teaist attacks or just outright, you know, in full uniform, you know, rounding people up and sending them off to detention centers. And if you don't want to get along with it, hey, they'll put that sword, that gun to your dome. But this is Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 12 to 14. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. And like I said earlier, the United States of America is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures, that virgin daughter of Babylon, mystery Babylon in Revelation chapter 17. Make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, which is what we're seeing right now with all these uh, migrants, a lot of them military aged men coming by themselves across the border. For Yahweh hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters. And you know, those waters goes into, you know, people, which the United States is full of many different nations. It's known as the melting pot. And then what else? The U.S. is surrounded by oceans. You know, the Gulf of Mexico, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. Abundant in treasures, a this used to be known as the place whose streets were paved with gold, where everybody came to make their dreams come true. Thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. Verse 14, Yahweh of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men, Chinese, Syrians, Iranians, Venezuelans, Russians, as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee putting that sword to you Americans for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy and like uh, Michael Schneider the author of that article has been saying he believes that we're coming into a time when millions of Americans are going to die verse 23 and the dead shall be cast out as dung and there shall be no man to comfort them for the earth shall be wasted and the cities shall be cast down. People are going to be out here dead on the streets like a piece of shit. And you ain't going to give a second thought to it when you step over them because you're just going to become numb to seeing that many dead bodies. There shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit and who shall gather them. The grapes shall ripen and who shall tread them. For all places shall be desolate of men, hundreds of thousands, you know, millions of people dead to the point to where this vegetation, since nobody's cutting the grass or, you know, trimming the trees or picking the fruit, is going to get wild out here. Think about I Am Legend. So that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. Such a lack of people that you're going to desire to just find somebody else. So you're not just talking to yourself out here like Will Smith was talking to that mannequin. For of a city, there shall be ten left and two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks. As in an orchard of olives upon every tree, there, sh there are left three or four olives or as when a vineyard is gathered, 
there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. Verse 31, even so in those days there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. And those that are left are going to be what? Getting chased by the sword. You know, troops looking for them, people breaking into your houses, searching the houses to what? Try to find some food to not starve to death. We truly are coming into some horrific times. As Ezra said, woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? But now I'm going to jump to the last part of this article. Of course, the same thing could be said about a full-blown war with Russia, which is coming. Dmitry Medvedev has warned us over and over again that the Russians will use nuclear weapons if they are pushed too far. And now he has issued perhaps his most ominous warning yet. Dmitry Medvedev, a close Putin ally who served as president from 2008 2012 said if a military defeat led to a return to the 1991 frontiers when the Soviet Union collapsed, Moscow would unleash Armageddon. Attempts to return Russia to the borders of 1991 will lead to only one thing, he said, towards a global war with Western countries using the entire strategic arsenal of our state in Kiev, Berlin, London, Washington. Hypersonic nuclear missiles would also strike all other beautiful historical places that have long been included in flight targets of our nuclear triad. He added, we will have the courage to do this if the disappearance of a thousand year old country, our great motherland is at stake and the sacrifices made by the people of Russia over the centuries will be in vain. The answer is obvious and nuclear destruction is also a part of biblical prophecy. This is Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. One woe or destruction is past, referring to World War I, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. World War II, which is past, and World War III, which is quickly coming upon us. And hey, in some instances, it can be said that we're in World War III right now, just the beginning stages. And World War III will go nuclear. Of course, this fucking devil would stop right here playing that music. But yeah, World War Three will go nuclear and the two main combatants is going to be the U.S. and Russia. Slovakia. Oh, one legged demon. But yeah. Back in Second Estrus, chapter 16. I'm going to jump up to verse 11. The Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled. And the fishes thereof also before Yahweh and before the glory of his power. And like it said in Isaiah chapter 24, the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunkard. And what's going to cause that nuclear missiles being shot to the ends of the earth during that third woe for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot in the ends of the world. And I don't know no archers that can shoot from Russia to the United States of America or, or anything like that. This is talking about those nuclear missiles. The prophets were describing the missiles parabolically because when they saw these visions thousands of years ago, they didn't know what a modern day nuclear weapon was. So they had to describe it the best way they could with what they knew during their times, ancient weapons of war. And a missile literally looks like an arrow. So that bow would be what? The silos and other launch platforms that they're fired from. And it's and funnily enough, the U.S. has a program called Broken Arrow in the event that they lose track of one of their nuclear weapons. And also, I believe that the state of Israel has a, it's either a program or something like that, but it's its in, in regards to nuclear weapons, and it's called Arrow 1, Arrow 2, and Arrow 3. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. 
when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. And what are some of those missiles called? ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. The fire, the nuclear fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backwards, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. And I'll just read verse 17 again and close it out. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So that's it with this video. With this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong as we can clearly see all hell is about to break loose and we are almost out of this final captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say a bad babal, kwam yasharala, and until next time, shalom.